Okay, we are here with the Electrolo 101. Losing daylight quick, but we got enough to do a quick video. Uh, this machine is in for service. Typical motor service, clean grease and all of that. This was the same machine that I found the bugs inside the tone arm. I actually found two. I found one jammed up in here, and later on, I found another corpse down in here. So we took those out, and miraculously, volume was restored. Now, there's not much I could do with the uh, reproducer on this one. This is a pot metal reproducer. The outer ring is brass. The back here is this pot metal. This is pot metal here. And, you know, it, it is all swollen and it's locked in there, basically. If I try to take this back off, I'm going to shatter it in 500 pieces. And the reason that that is important is one, I can't replace it, but another, it says Electrola on it. That's a very hard reproducer to find. This is identical to any other number four made by, you know, HMV in the UK. This whole machine was made in the UK. Only thing on this that's German is the water decal. It's an Electrola. Even the speed control is in English and everything on the motors in English. It has a dealer tag from uh, Berlin or is it Berlin? Hamburg. I'm sorry. A dealer tag from Hamburg. That's it. That's, you know, this was made in the UK and shipped over there for sale by Electrola. So these are very hard to come by. This is a nice display item. It fits on the tone arm now. It was stuck on it initially. I had to relieve the brass in, ring in there a little bit. I took it out first. Then I relieved it with a file. Don't try to do it with it still on a reproducer. You'll punch a hole right through the diaphragm. This diaphragm is not in the best of shape. This will play a record. It will play a record. But the gasket here is stone hard and on the back. That will restrict the needle bar's freedom of movement. It's got to be able to move ever so slightly in and out as the needle travels down the groove of the record. That's the groove. And if it can't do that, if it's locked rigidly in place, this starts to cut the record. It starts to make a groove in there, and it will destroy it eventually. You'd, and besides which, you're not going to get good sound out of it. Why have a machine capable of producing good sound if all you're going to get is two tin cans and a piece of string sound. You know, I mean, it wasn't that horrible, but it, it not nearly what it should be. What I have on here is a Victrola number two reproducer from one of my other machines. This fits directly onto the same tone arm as this without any modifications, except, of course, it might be too tight to fit on there. You might have to modify the, uh, the isolated gasket a little bit to fit on. Not a big deal. Sometimes you can just bend ears on some of these and fit them on. Sometimes you have to file the isolated gaskets or brass ring a little bit. Uh, either way, it's easy. Um, this is the cheapest and easiest option to get one of these machines with an, a non-rebuildable, basically swollen, cracked, or whatever, pot metal number four. The earliest machines, they were all brass number fours. This was probably made in maybe 1928, 29. And uh, it's got the Model 59 motor in it, all of that. So they had gone to pop metal by this point. These can be found. This one's gold-plated because it came off of a, you know, a more upscale machine, a Victor machine. You can find these about 55 bucks on eBay. Or uh, sometimes you can buy them completely rebuilt already. 55 is not rebuilt. That's just a core. Uh, or you can buy them fully rebuilt for like 110 plus tax and shipping on there. 110, 115, something like that. I've seen them a few people lately selling them. I don't know their quality. I have never dealt with those particular people. I don't know any about it, but they are available. They are they are there. Uh, I know that George Valima at Great Lakes Antique Phonograph can rebuild these for you and probably provide one already rebuilt. So can Walt Summers, uh, Gettysburg Antique Phonograph. He's done a few orthophonics for me. I don't stock orthophonic parts. So I don't rebuild those ones myself. I only do number two, number four in exhibition for my machines. Those are the machines I play with. Um, they can rebuild them or sell you in a complete unit already built. I don't know their prices. You'd have to talk to them. But they can do it. So it's available. You don't have to panic. It's, oh, God, I'll never be able to play my machine. No, you can play it. And as far as I'm concerned, a Victrola number two sounds just as good on this machine as does the number four. Okay, it, it, to my untrained ear. Untrasted, that's the point to remember, untrained ear. I am not a trained, you know, I, too many years of too many loud noises. There are people out there with, with a trained ear who can detect the nuances that I will miss completely. To me, though, ordinary guy, it sounds beautiful. 
But anyway, let us play Home Sweet Home. I'm playing this particular record because it is a clean record, clean grooves, not badly worn. These little motors they put in these machines with the smallest of springs, and they are the smallest of motors too, they will not really play a worn record very well at all. A worn record, and I'll demonstrate that one or the other ones, a worn record will stop this machine dead. It'll just stop it, or it'll slow it and go, I sound like it's got the slows. Nothing you can do about that. You can play those worn records on your electric machine or maybe on a multi-spring Victrola, and they probably will play just fine. See how nicely that plays. Now, let me find a record with a little bit of wear on it, and you'll I can demonstrate what happens when you try to play one of those on this type of machine. It doesn't usually work out was I had this whole album of Glenn Miller records I picked up at a recent estate sale. Now I wanted to test them out on this, but they are just the grooves. Like here's uh let's see, which one is this one? Huh, I thought I had in the mood in here. I can swear I did. The grooves are so worn and the records are a little dirty and it just doesn't have the, the strength to punch through that. You know, that's real common with these types of smaller machines like this. You gotta have the cleanest records for these. You know, if you find records that play real nice on these, they're usually gonna be in very good shape. You keep them with the machines. <laughs> you always have something good. Okay. Now, something like this, this kind of wear, you might not even notice. You won't notice it at all in your electric machine, except in the sound quality. It won't stop it. But uh, more, mostly the, the three and four spring controllers, sometimes the two spring ones, will play through a slightly worn record. And these are only slightly worn. They're, oops, I did not put a needle on that. They're not as badly worn as they could be. But they do have wear, and for a small motor, that's, that's really all it takes. 
Okay, let's get the needle on there. All right, let her spin up. <laughs> See what I mean? Now watch. Maybe I can spin it up a little bit for you. <laughs> That's what I mean. This is a shame. It's not too surprising given that In the Mood is Glenn Miller's most popular recording, except maybe String of Pearls or Little Brown Jug. But uh, I'll try another one. Maybe one another one to play better for you. Pennsylvania 6 5000. Uh, or Stardust. We'll try Stardust. That looks like it has a little less wear on it. Okay, we'll give it a shot. Nope. This is what it was doing earlier, actually. Okay, we'll give Pennsylvania 6 5000 a shot. Let's see what that does. <laughs> Not a chance. Not a chance with those. That's a shame. Not period correct period correct for this machine anyway but still um three o'clock in the morning john mccormick give that one a shot change out the needle because needles are replaceable records are not in the event this is actually a good record i don't want to be chewing it up with a needle that's already got some wear on it so we replace the needles we buy them by the well i buy them by the thousand but uh you can buy them by the 100 pack on eBay, no problem. Usually to give you a better price if you buy a lot. And since I play a lot of records, you've seen me play hundreds of records on all kinds of machines. I buy a lot of needles. These are, by the way, the loud tone needles. I'm outdoors competing with a lot of different noises out here. So you need to have a, a loud needle.
Now you can see that one has some wear, but not enough to stop it from spinning. You just hear it in sound quality. And this record is easily 25 years or more older than those Glenn Miller recordings that this would not push through. It's a red label too. That's the premium. You can see the wear a little bit. This is the premium record, the premium record label for Victor. Red label, that's where you had your Miko Caruso and John McCormick and all of the top performers of their time. Now, let's see, let's try one more. We'll, one more of these, try to get one of these Glenn Miller records to play. That's in the mood again. It's getting dark out here and I can't really see what the heck I'm doing, but let's see here. No, that's Pennsylvania 6, 5,000. Maybe I tried to play them all? That can't be. That can't be. Let's see. Let's try that again. Uh, must not have put them back in order. Oh, well. I guess I'll just have to pull them all out of there and try it that way. American Patrol. I'll bet that was a real, well, American Patrol was a really popular song at the time. But I bet that probably will stop it. I can see that coming already. Usually the most popular songs of a particular time, those are going to be the most worn records. For obvious reasons, they were played the most. We've got to do this by feel. I can't really see the hole there anymore. There we go. And let's spin it up. And we will listen to it, not play. Okay, let's get that needle I dropped over there back where it belongs. There we go. Can't really see where the opening group is. <laughs> They're not going to do it. The whole album is pretty well shot. <laughs> we tried, but at least we got a couple of ones on there that played good. That's enough to demonstrate that the number two reproducers really do sound fairly decent on these pre-orthophonic machines. I mean, they're not orthophonic machines anyway. That would come with the 102 and sort of with the 106. But even that one was kind of set up to be orthophonic, but wasn't. The number four's big advantage is it has a slightly larger diaphragm and slightly, re, you know, the reproducer is a little bit different. And not the reproducer, I'm sorry, the needle bar, the, the pivots on the number four are not the same as the springs used on the exhibition and the number two. But frankly, I find them pretty close. Again, to my untrained ear, I'm not an expert. You know, there's people out there a lot better trained ears than mine who can pick out the, the, the nuances between one from the other that's definitely not me <laughs> but anyway you can see she's playing pretty good and unfortunately i don't know what i'm gonna do with this glenn miller album because i don't have an electric machine to play them on i will try them on the big the big 16 if they sound like crap on that i'll just put them aside somewhere and that's that for now gopro stop recording